बायोमेकैनिक्स ऑफ सीटिंग and uh, ergonomically designed seating chairs and how we can increase the uh, efficiency of our worker by reducing the injuries by reducing the traumatic conditions or other musculoskeletal disorders which may result from seating or prolonged seating and by avoiding all these hazards we can increase the productivity and efficiency of the workers why we seat why we sit what is the reason of sitting as we know that when we want to relax ourselves we want to sit somewhere and eventually the purpose of a seat is to provide stable body support in a posture that is comfortable over a period of time physiologically satisfactory and appropriate to the task or activity in question the seating posture or the seating or the seating where are you sitting should be so comfortable that you can sit over that surface over a long period of time or over a required period of time without uh fatigue or with or with minimum fatigue and it should be at the same time physiologically satisfactory as well as anatomically and biomechanically satisfactory and it should be according to the requirement of the job according to the requirement of the worker according to the job responsibility of the worker to whom we are talking the human body designed to move as we know that the purpose of joints and contraction of muscle is to move our body from one place to another place from one position to another position and the human body is made for movement the best chair designed in the world will not force good posture but it prevents the need for the human body to move why we need sitting what is the requirement of sitting energy first of all we will talk about energy as energy consumption is low in sitting position as compared to the other postures uh, that is as compared to the standing walking running and etc sitting requires 20% less energy than standing efficiency if supported and reclined intradiscal pressure is less than that for erect standing when a person is supported and reclined the intradiscal pressure the pressure over the intervertebral disc is less than when the uh, when the worker or when the person is in erect standing and the loading over the spine is reduced effectiveness sitting increases the postural stability for fine motor tasks and we can do fine motor task during sitting and we can concentrate on the 
on these tasks very well while during sitting as compared to standing or other postures. Our 50% are low back injuries. Poor chair design contributes to poor seating, seated posture, which plays a major, major role in these injuries. The over 50% injuries are due to the poor chair design and that chair design doesn't compatible to the uh, requirement of the person in question and it results in the different musculoskeletal injuries and traumas to the person ergonomics of seating seating the weight transferred to a sporting area by the ischial trochoides as we know that the ischial bones are known as the sitting bone or sit bone because when we are seated the weight of our upper body went to the ischial trochoides of both sides which are the part of the pelvis remove weight from the feet and maintain a stable posture when we are sitting when we are in erect position our weight is directly uh, finally comes to the feet by passing through the spine pelvis lower limb and it ends at the feet but when we are in sitting position the weight is on the chair and it is not directly on the on our feet muscles not directly involved with the work and can relax in sitting position the muscle work is minimum and muscles are not actively involved in maintaining the erect position and many of the muscles are in a relaxed position ideally there is no single ideal sitting posture illustrated 90 degrees person sitting posture is for anthropometric reference only can design a chair for the best single way to sit we need a variety of chairs that allow different users to each sit in a variety of postures that means that the chair should be adjustable and it should be it could be adjusted to the requirement of the person who is sitting over it the person's height weight the arm length the leg length and his body features varies from person to person so that the ideal chair should be adjustable and its different features could be adjusted according to the requirement of the person ergonomic sitting comfortable working posture with neutral alignment of all your joint from head to toe if you are sitting comfortably your sitting posture is comfortable and you are feeling a degree of relax relaxability in your muscles and there is less stress on over the joints this is the ideal sitting posture and your body is ready for the work for which you are assigned your joints are in a good working position your muscles are capable of doing all the tasks which are which you have to do in your job helps to reduce the stress and strain on the muscles tendons and skeletal system thus reducing the risks of developing a uh, ergonomical problems ergonomical problems arise 
from the edges to the muscles, tendons, and other musculoskeletal parts. And if the position, the posture is not good while sitting, it could become, a, it could result in the ergonomical problems and it reduces the efficiency and productivity of the worker at the end. Anthropometry. What is anthropometry? Anthropos means human and matron means mayor. Thus, it is the measurement of human individuals. It is the science of measurement of human body, provides therapists to understand uh, the complexities of the human form and how it interfaces with its environment. Anthropometric measurement in sitting posture. How we can anthropometrically measure the individual in the sitting posture. The person sits erect and looks straight ahead. The person should sit in the chair in the erect posture. The sitting surface is adjusted so that the person's eyes are parallel to the floor and the knees are bent to a 90 degree angle with the feet flat on the floor. The ideal posture where you can get the anthropometrical measurement is described as the sitting surface is adjusted so that the person's thighs are parallel to the ground, parallel to the floor, and the knees bent to a 90 degree angle with the feet flat on the floor, and the lower thigh will make an angle, an angle of 90 degree with the upper thigh, and your feet will rest on the floor. The upper arm is relaxed and perpendicular to the horizontal plane. And the forearm is at the right angle to the upper arm and thus also parallel to the floor. Your forearm should be parallel to the floor and it should be at right angle to the upper arm. Measurements in sitting are made using a horizontal reference point, either the ground or the seat. And vertical reference point and emissionary line that touches the back of the uncompressed buttocks and shoulder blades of the subject. The different anthropometrical measurements while a person is sitting. The diagram is shown the patellar height, the thigh height, the sitting height, the elbow height, the shoulder height, and your orbital height. These are the vertical anthropometrical measurements. This is the lateral view. And sagittal anthropometrical measurement lateral view would be abdominal depth. Your arm extending sitting depth and the internal sitting depth. Now we will discuss these biomechanics of sitting. Biomechanics of sitting depending on shear and posture. Some proportion of total body weight is transferred to the floor via the seat fan and feet, arms rest and back rest. The biomechanics of the sitting depend upon the shear and posture. And the body weight could be transferred to the floor via the seat pan where you are sitting, the feet, your armrest, and your backrest. When sitting, the pressure fall onto the two small sit bone or ischial tuberosities. Ischium, ischium is the part of the hip bone, and when two hip bone 
are connected together through sacrum it forms the pelvis and ischial trochanters are the places or the points where we have to sit up compressive stresses exerted on areas of buttocks beneath the trochanters as buttock is made up of the gluteal muscles and it is beneath the ischial trochanters and hence the compression over the uh, buttock and the weight of the upper body went to the buttock or transferred to the buttock through the ischial trochanters and from there to the seating pan of the chair when sit upright approximately 2/3 of body weight is distributed to the chair seat with the backrest armrest and floor supporting the remainder when we are sitting upright 2/3 of body weight is distributed to the chair seat or chair pan with the backrest armrest and floor supporting the remainder and the remainder part of the weight is supported by the floor pelvis the sacrum is fixed to the pelvis so rotational movement of the pelvis affects the lumbar vertebrae as the lumbar vertebrae are are connected to the sacrum and sacrum is the bone which is connecting the two hip bone in the pelvis and when there is rotation of the pelvis there is some movement or some adjusted adjustment made by the lumbar spine forward rotation when the pelvis is rotated forwardly forward rotation of the pelvis leads to increased lordosis of the lumbar spine as normally there is lordosis in the lumbar spine and if there is forward rotation of the pelvis then it results in the increased lordosis of the lumbar spine helping to maintain an upright trunk position and sitting unsupported when there is no back support for the spine you have to sit upright then you have to forwardly rotate the pelvis so that you can sit upright by increasing the lumbar lordosis tilt the pelvis forward to the establish a neutral lumbar spinal posture so that your spine should look alike in straight position by increasing the lumbar lordosis and by the forward rotation of the pelvis when there is no support for example for your back Maintaining this posture requires muscle activity and will be easier to sustain if the individual is involved in regular fitness activities. As this position requires some adjustment to the normal sitting posture, so that the position or the posture maintained by the activity activity of the muscles by the contraction of the muscles. and it is easily adjusted if the person is regularly involved in his business activities otherwise it could not be maintained backward rotation of the pelvis backward rotation of the pelvis leads to the increased flattening of the lumbar spine and eventually increases the kyphosis when we sit our hamstring muscles pull on and rotate our pelvis which flattens the lumbar spine the lumbar spine loses its lordosis when there is backward rotation of the pelvis and it results by the pulling of the hamstring muscles which rotate the pelvis backward and it results in the straightening of the lumbar spine or flattening of the lumbar spine or there is a uh, uh, diminished or there is no lumbar lordosis when there is backward rotation of the pelvis sitting with the straight spine puts additional pressure on the front of the spinal disc 
and creates additional strain on ligaments. When the lumbar lordosis is reduced, there is some extra pressure over the anterior aspect of the intervertebral discs and additional strain on the ligaments of the spine. This pressure also changes dramatically when a person moves among standing, upright and slouched seated postures. This pressure also changes when a person moves from standing, upright and slouched seating postures. This pressure is greater during sitting than standing and this pressure drop with an inclination of sheer backrest, that is inclined position, especially when it is tilted from vertical to 110 degrees. You can see in the diagram, when there is flattening of the lumbar lordosis, the, this pressure decreases anteriorly and it, it is increases posterior. How posterior affects the disc pressure? You, it is clear from the diagram that how much pressure is on the disc while standing 100% sitting with backward tilting 105 percent and the angle is 100 percent or 100 degree it the disc pressure increases by 15 percent and it becomes 115 percent and when the angle is 90 degree it is increased by 140 percent and when you flex your trunk forward and the angle becomes 80%, the disc pressure will become 190%. As this is the changes in the disc pressure during different postures of the body in standing and different positions of the seating. This is another picture showing the disc pressure how it varies by different angles of the spine, different positions of the spine, and different position of your arm, upper arm and position of the feet. Now we will discuss about how we can sit properly so that the disc problems the ligament injuries, the muscular problems, and other problems of the musculoskeletal system should be reduced, or we can avoid all these problems. And if the patient, if the worker is a patient of some musculoskeletal disorders, how we can guide him properly to maintain his posture during his working hour so that his problems could not be aggravated by the prolonged sitting positions, prolonged sitting postures. And if the worker is a healthy person, we can avoid the musculoskeletal injuries, musculoskeletal problems by the prolonged sitting positions during working hours. Neutral positions, good sitting posture. Sitting like this is known as sitting in a neutral position. This position reduces the amount of stress on the muscles as the muscles are contracting minimally and there is a backrest and the sitting pan is a, is a good, comfortable uh, dimension and there is a back support and the, your upper body is supported by the back of the chair so that there is reduction in the muscle work or muscle activity 
to maintain the position of the body and the body weight is transferred through the chair to the ground what are the benefits of a good ergonomic sitting posture if the patient's or the worker posture is ergonomically fit is ergonomically good biomechanically good we can increase his working capacity we can increase his player during work his confidence during working hours and we can gain the confidence and player of the worker which will result in the greater productivity or greater interest of the worker in his or her work which results in the betterment of the organization maintaining a good posture good sitting posture can not only help to improve your appearance but it can also alleviate pain in the neck and back if a worker is a patient of neck or back if he is maintaining a good posture his good posture can alleviate his neck and back pain and if he is a normal person you can avoid the extra stress on the spinal column on the different joints and this intervertebral discs of the spine so that patient also that the worker would remain healthy while working the benefits of good posture good sitting posture includes easier breathing when the so the sixth spine is in good condition there is no too much pressure over the so the sixth spine and the trunk of the worker he can breathe very well when there is easier breathing there is less effort required for breathing if the posture of the worker is good and if the posture of the worker is not good and there is some extra pressure on the thoracic spine or over the trunk it needs a laborious contractions of the breathing respiratory muscles healthier joints when the posture is good the pressure the weight over the joint is equally distributed and the joints are out of unnecessary stresses and hence their health is good better concentration if the worker's posture is good he is he is sitting in an ideal position his concentration over the work will be increased if his posture is not good and his muscles have to maintain its bad position by extra working by extra efforts so that it will result in their fatigue and their fatigue will results in the mood changes of the worker and he cannot concentrate on his work and he will it will uh, distract him from his working and may he become a patient of uh, muscle soreness or some other musculoskeletal disorders which distract his concentration over the work good digestion it will help 
also in the good digestion prevent back pain the good posture good sitting posture prevent the worker from back pain and reduce the tension it will also reduce the tension of the person and he will be in a good mood in a good position of working improve the muscle tone good position good posture also improve the muscle tone and unnecessary pressure and stress over this over the muscles reduces the extra activity of the work on the muscles and it will result in the good muscle tone now we will discuss about the different sitting postures forward posture as you can see in the picture this is the forward sitting posture when the trunk is flexed forward for example if you are working on a computer or laptop you have to flex your spine anteriorly and this is the forward posture center of mass in front of the ischial tuberosities float sports more than 25% of the body weight common posture for desk work when you are working on a desk this is the posture which is maintained by the different workers and different persons while working on the desk upright posture it involves the trunk being upright and straight with the seat and backrest at an approximate 90 degree angle and center of mass directly above the ischial tuberosity floor supports 25% of the body weight the classic upright seated position with perfect 90 degree angle torso angles is perfectly acceptable but rarely used this is the ideal sitting position but this is not being practiced and it is rarely used we can see in the pictures that uh, the trunk is upright over the pelvis and the person is sitting upright and he is the classic upright sitting position with perfect 90 degrees torso angle is perfectly acceptable but it is rarely used recline posture center of mass behind the ischial tuberosities floor supports less than 25% of body weight common for chairs with large inclined backrest preferred for resting you see the you can see in the picture that this is not the working position but it is somewhat a resting position when the person is reclined his upper posture upper body torso then the body weight transfer to the floor is reduced to the less than 25% of the body weight and chairs for this position are special specially made for resting although this posture reduces the pressure on the disc it is not necessarily functional for working because it also increases the viewing distance and arm reach to the work area as you are recline your upper body torso so that you 
your body went in a position which is not suitable for working and your hand area and your leash area to reach some things over the desk is reduced so this is not a pos ideal position for working but this is a resting position it can also increase the strain on the back on the neck if user flexes his or her head forward for viewing without the benefits of a high backrest or even a headrest if the person flexes his neck flexes his cervical spine it will increase the strain over the neck and it may become the cause of the neck pain poor sitting posture but people who spend a large part of their day in one position for a long time can lead to a number of problems these problems can happen so slowly that hardly notice but it is often difficult to undo some of the damage that poor posture can cause once it is done when when the when a poor posture is maintained for a longer period of time it will results in different bodily positions which may cause problem to the body and results in different musculoskeletal disorders but these are went unnoticed during the daily routine poor posture in sitting can lead to the muscle shortening pressure ulcers when you are sitting in one position for a longer period of time it will become in it will become as a result of the result of prolonged sitting in pressure ulcers or pressure sores when there is a continuous pressure or continuous weight which went to the different bony prominences of the body and due to continuous pressure due to continuous weight over these bony prominences it becomes in the pressure ulcers the poor posture may result in pain in different muscles in the joint of the body in the spinal joints in the different joints which have to maintain the position of the body for a long period of time in the same posture increased spasm spasms of the muscles may be increased by the poor posture when the posture is not ideal and there is uneven pressure over the body torso the breathing muscles the respiratory muscle has to has to do undue effort in breathing so the breathing becomes difficult loss of balance balance become poor by the poor posting the poor sitting posture and problems keeping your head upright as we discussed earlier that if the neck is flexed forward it will it can cause and you pressure over the cervical spine which results in the cervical spine pain the body what is need for movement we often sit because of fatigue that result from standing when we become fatigued 
by prolonged standing or working, we have to relax ourselves. And how we can relax our body? We can relax our body by sitting down. Sitting is more efficient way to perform many occupational and non-occupational tasks. In office routines, in office in office workers, and in many other occupations, one have to sit for his daily routine work and daily office work. Sitting in many jobs makes good sense as it relieves the body's sporting muscles, offers them a chance to rest and is less demanding on the blood circulation to the legs. As the legs and the lower limb is in the relaxed position so that the demand to the blood circulation to the leg is reduced, there is less pressure, there is less pressure over the muscles, muscles are not working actively and most of the body muscles are in the resting position. Sitting allows the chair to support the seated person's body mass. For all this said, it must be realized that the body was designed not to sit but rather to move. Body is designed for movement, but sitting is a posture, is a position where we can, we, which we can use to relax the body, which we can use to work some certain tasks in the offices, in different occupations, but In those positions, we may have to move our upper body frequently. So, even while sitting, one is not become stationary, but he has to move his body part time to time. How a chair can be ergonomically designed to improve the productivity of the worker and to reduce the different injuries and different musculoskeletal disorders. The chair provides easily adjustable and accessible features for seat height. An ergonomical chair would be that one who has the adjustable Features of seat height, seat height could be adjusted according to the height of the worker, backrest and level of lumbar support and seat inclination. As the different persons have different body, different type of body, so that the chair features could be adjustable so that a fish uh, so that a worker could adjust himself uh, could adjust the chair according to his body needs and according to the need of the work which is he or she is doing it gives stability by providing good support to the buttocks via the seat pan and to the back via the backrest the chair should provide good support to the buttocks via the seat pan. Seat pan should be of good dimension that he can easily adjust the buttocks of the worker. And his backrest should provide rest to his vertebral column, to his spinal column, to his trunk. It allows the seated person to freely move within the sitting seated position. While sitting, the person could easily move himself or herself for his office work. There are mainly three types of chair design, fixed posture chair, dynamic chair design, 
and the combination chair design. Basic features of well-designed ergonomic chairs. A seat height is easily adjustable and had pneumatic pedestal base. Seat height could be adjusted according to the height of the person who is using it and had the pneumatic pedestal base. Base should be of pneumatic pedestal. Ability of use to easily make all adjustment while seated. Ergonomically designed ideal chairs has the feature to easily make all adjustment while seating. A person can adjust the chair according to his body features while he is sitting on the chair. Good lumbar support. Lumbar support of the chair should be ideal. A backrest that adjusts vertically to support the lumbar spine as well as in an interior posterior direction and that is narrow enough to allow freedom of arm movement without chair interference. As the worker is sitting in the workstation and he has to move his upper body, his upper body, uh, upper limb frequently to reach to reach things for his routine work. So the seat should be designed as it could not, uh, it should not be become hindrance while doing his tasks. Dynamic movement options of the backrest and seat pan. A seat pan with the curved front or waterfall edge to reduce the pressure behind the knees. A seat pan, we will discuss all these characteristics one by one that what is the what should be the feature of a good seat pan? What should be the features of the good backrest? One by one, here we are discussing about the features of the ergonomically designed chair. And in the coming lectures, we will discuss one by one all these features. A tension adjustment that affect the ease of forward and backward inclination of the backrest. A four or five prone base of support to prevent the chair from tipping. To increase the base of support, there should be four or five prone base, prone base of support for the stability of the chair and to avoid the chair from tipping or to get fell down. Of the worker, clusters that are sturdy that are sturdy and allow for both mobility and stability. While seated, the mobility and stability could not be compromised, and these easily available for the worker during his work. Seat padding that is soft but not too soft to allow even distribution of the pressure. To avoid the pressure source over the body and to relieve the pressure over the bony prominences, the sitting pad should be soft, but not too soft. If uh, the sitting pad will be too soft, it will not help in relieving the pressure over the pressure points and it, it will become in the uh, it will become in the pressure source at different points of the pressure. In the picture we can see 
an ideal ergonomically designed chair and his different features base of support the seating pan the backrest the adjustable head headrest the armrest and other different features of a ergonomically designed ideal chair this is another design and here we can see the different designs of the chairs which are in use in different working areas guidelines for seating what are the guidelines of seating the following are some guidelines to evaluate proper chair adjustment and fit adjust the height as we discussed earlier about the features of good ergonomically designed chair now we will discuss one by one how we can use these different features and can help the worker to increase his efficiency to increase his concentration over work and to decrease his different musculoskeletal uh, disorders and different musculoskeletal injuries during work and reduce these injuries to minimum or to reduce it to the uh, to zero so that the worker can work ideally and he can give his 100% during his job next time we will discuss about the guidelines of seating and different features of the ergonomically designed chair will be discussed in the next lecture and 